Hello, welcome to the whole country caboodle. Who wants a tour of our laser room? This is gonna be so much fun today. I'm Leanne Anderson with the whole country caboodle and this is my very good friend, Misha Eveland. And Misha is our laser person extraordinaire. The here. queen. The queen <laughs> of you. the laser room <laughs> here you. at the whole country Thank caboodle. You. So without Misha, none of this can happen. Absolutely none of it. And so what we're gonna do today is we are gonna show you the actual process of what we go through to get one of these lasers done, these laser cut appliques. And so uh, we just hope it gives you a better picture as far as what we do, how we do it. And I know for me, I had never seen the process before. So we're excited to show it to you today. So as we get started, right behind me is actually where we cut all of our fabric. Now, each piece that we have to cut, because the machines are geared to a certain size, we have to cut our fabrics generally 18 by 22 inches. So that's the size of the piece that we start with. So we're gonna start right here. This is, um, this is one of our machines. We actually have three working lasers here at the Whole Country Caboodle. We started four years ago with one small laser machine and quickly found out that we grew out of that and then into some bigger machines. And so this is one of them that we use. Um, each one has its own computer that goes with it so that we can keep these all working at the same time. So we're gonna keep walking through. And actually over here, um, we have all of the fabric set up. Misha, you wanna kind of give us an idea of what you've got here on the table? Well, I like a wide variety of different um, fabrics. Each day I make different things all throughout the day. So I like to have a little stockpile so each night I cut fabric and Ed, my assistant, <laughs> Mr. Ed, Mr. Mr. Ed, <laughs> my assistant, he normally and typically irons all the fabric I'm going to use for the day. And I then also iron a lot of things because there's different pieces in all the appliques, but I just have it kind of organized from the basics to the ones that, you know, are unique to each applique. And it just makes it handy because I just grab a sheet and um, most of our laser cuts are now by the uh, 18 by 22. We do have smaller pieces we cut, but most of them have now changed over to the larger pieces. And look at this stack. It's we have so stacks nice. of the Black Star. We use a lot of Black Star. Yes. Well, the cool thing about having these all done like this is it makes Misha's job much more efficient. And we've really kind of prided ourselves in trying to get our orders out very quickly. And so Misha's done a great job of getting stocked um, in the certain areas we, you know, we sell to distributors to. So we like to have a lot on hand. Now we're gonna kind of walk you through the process of what it takes to get one of these appliques done. Misha's at the ironing center. She's got her 18 by 22 inch piece of fabric. Ooh, look at this ironing center. Isn't oh, that nice? amazing ironing center. Yeah, let's Whoa. step back and just admire this. This is put out by a company up in Canada. These are like my Canadian sons. Mm -hmm. um, Eddie Crest uh, Furniture, they're a, a group up there in um, Ontario. And these guys make the most amazing sewing furniture plus a lot of other things and if you want a fun game to play croconole is yeah. the game to play and these boys will send you one of their games anyway we start right here at um, the ironing center and this is where all of the fusible gets ironed on now ed all he pre-cuts we get these rolls in 75 um, yard rolls and my husband ed pre-cuts the um the fusible into these sheets we use um, heat and bond light. It's a, it's a great, real easy fusible to use. And Misha then hand irons all of this fusible based on the recommendations of the um, fusible company on how to properly iron this onto the fabric. Um, we use a reliable iron, which I can't say enough good things about the, the reliable iron. Uh, we also do this process with no steam. So it's done with a dry iron. So we'll get the fusible all put on, and then we're gonna show you the actual workings of the laser and how, how it operates. Now, you might think that we're cutting these pieces in multiple stacks. We cut this by one sheet at a time. So I'm sure you probably can do a few more, but we found to be the most efficient and the best cutting with one piece at a time. And this girl can assemble 
gazillions of them every <laughs> single day. So like I said, she's the queen. She yeah. is the queen of the laser room. So you see, she's got that done. That's what we have back over here that we showed you are all these pieces. Now we're going to fire up one of these lasers and we're going to show you exactly how it's done. We pulled up the file that we need that we're going to cut. Um, we've got it downloaded and we've sent it over to the machine. And the first thing we need to do once we get that sent over to the machine is we want to make sure that we've got um, this set up, the fabric set up exactly where we need it. So once we put the, the piece down into the machine, we know that we've got it focused to the level that we need it. Then what we do is we frame this out. And so we just run a little button that says frame. And what it does is it shows us that we're in the right spot as to where we're gonna cut these pieces out. So once we get that done, we're gonna shut the lid and we're gonna start it up. These machines are incredible. They will cut exactly what you send to them. And it's amazing how precise they are. It's actually cut with a, with a very fine flame, if you can see that in there. Um, we do have to be equipped here to make sure that we're you know, uh, ready if there's an incident or anything happens. So, I mean, it's got a complete ventilation system with it. It all has to be vented outside. These pieces are uh, much larger, so it doesn't take very long to cut a sheet of fabric. But there are, um, there are sheets of fabric when we're doing like little eyeballs that it might take up to 20 minutes to cut an entire sheet, but you get enough pieces for a long, long time. We've also had to learn that with different colors of fabric, we have to cut at different levels or different um, uh, settings. Like white, we have to be very careful uh, because of a burned edge. And so we've done a lot of experimenting and Misha's constantly testing levels to make sure um, that they are accurate for the color of fabric that we do as well. And of course, we try to have as little of waste as possible. And if we have larger chunks of fabric, I know Misha will throw that aside and sometimes use that for test pieces and such. So. All right. We've got the first piece cut. And Caitlin, you want to show this in here when we pull this out? A lot of times what we do is pull the outside piece off. And then we've got all of our individual pieces all cut. You see it's got the fusible on the back. And I will say this, that if you ever get a piece and the fusible isn't fused down real well or your backing paper doesn't come off quite as easily as you think it should, just take it to your ironing board and use a medium iron on it, flip it over and iron on the back side. Let it cool and then your paper should peel right off. So if you ever have an issue with that, don't panic. Just make sure that it gets re-ironed down and um, it should be fine. Now over here, what we're going to show you is exactly what you're going to get in one of these packs. And so this one that we're cutting right now is our Kali Sheltie in the brown coloration. We actually have this Kali Sheltie in four different color combinations. And so this is what you get. You're going to get a beautiful color picture on the one side, your instructions on how to assemble on the back side. And then on the inside, what you're going to get is actually a layout of where each of the pieces go. And in our applique video, it shows you exactly how to assemble those on one of those silicone mats. And so this little Kali Sheltie 
you can see this. This has quite a few pieces in it. So you can see all the different cuttings that we have to do for that one applique. We have some that you might get multiples on a sheet. Yep. You don't need to just snip them out. And that's the thing that, that Misha's really discovered through doing this and through assembly is we were trying to be very, very efficient with um, how many pieces we were getting out of a sheet of fabric, but we're finding that for our customer, um, it's better to have maybe a little larger piece with two or three pieces put together um, so that when you're pulling that out, you're not, say, losing something, you know, if it falls on the floor, because some of the pieces are pretty small. And so, like, if you would get, say, say this, where it's got a couple of little pieces on it, we recommend just take the, the backing paper off first and then snip them apart. So it just makes the process a little bit easier. So now that we've showed, shown you the applique process, what we're going to do next is we're going to show you all of the appliques that we have available to you on our website. We're going to walk you through all of our appliques now so you can see exactly what we have available. And most of these are going to be kind of by collection. And so that's the way they're going to be on our website as well. So the first group that we're going to show you is actually from a group called Scatter Love. And it was in a, it was in a calendar program and it was also in a quilt called Scatter Love throughout the year. And so th those are still available, but these are basically an applique for every, uh, for every month. Um, these are a little bit larger appliques. Um, as you can see, they're all, they're all packaged behind. Everything is included. Not only, you know, can you do them for quilts, but you can do them for small wall hangings, just little projects, kind of, you got to think sort of outside the box when you're looking at these appliques. They can be used for a lot of different things. So keep that in mind. As we keep going, we've got um, our cat um, section. And actually, we've got 10 different cats now. And these all coordinate with the cats that are in our fabric line, Live, Love, Meow. Um, keep in mind that these not only come as pre-cuts, but they also come as a, a single pattern. So let's just say you have, um, you have a cat that looks like the tuxedo, but it's a different color. Um, you can get the pattern and cut your own. Um, and, then, and then you've got it to whatever color you want it. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, I also want to tell you that in, um, in quite a few of our, our animal uh, pieces, we use actual batting for some of the applique pieces. A couple of the questions that I get, number one, is how washable is it since it's on the outside of a quilt? Um, and then another question that we get as far as in the fusing process. Uh, washability, I think the best way that I have tested it has been on bibs for my grandchildren and they get washed repeatedly. And it may, um, it may pill just a little bit. Uh, not bad though, but it washes up well. So I, I mean, washability, we've tested it and it washes very, very well. The other thing that I will tell you is that when you fuse these together, because the batting is a little bit thicker, um, you may have to use just a little bit more heat. I know our instructions say use a dry medium iron, uh, but with the batting pieces, sometimes you have to heat it up just a little bit more and use a shot of steam. So just keep that in mind, um, that you may need a shot of steam to activate the fusible on the batting pieces. Moving along, we've got our houses and we've got... Um, four adorable little houses that go with the Covered in Truth uh, line, as well as then um, the words that we use in a couple of our uh, quilts. And those can be used for a multitude of different things. So you can see there's tons of different pieces in all of these applique packs. Now, several years ago, um, I started with 12 different dogs. And that was how I got started doing laser cuts um, we currently today have still those same 12 dogs, but we have, I believe it's 98 different, some of them are the same dog in different colors, but we've got 98 different dogs that you can choose from. And we're coming up with new ones, um, 
as, as often as we can. We get a lot of requests um, and we appreciate that. When we start hearing one over and over and over, then we know that that's something that we really need to do. Um, our most recent ones that we have done have been, um, oh, we did a, a Chinese crested. That one was a riot to do. We did the English Mastiff. Uh, we did a Portuguese water dog. And so if there's something that you're really looking for and we can help you with that, or sometimes it's simply taking one of our dogs and recoloring it and it will look like a different, even a different breed of dog. So you can kind of keep that in mind as well. Um, these dogs would have, would have uh, they, they travel with us when we go to shows. Uh, they uh, they're practically become the mainstay of our business. So we, we love our critters. Um, the Woodland characters are uh, from a little group that Caitlin and I did called To Be or Not To Be. And the top ones are a little bit larger and they're just the heads. And then as we move down, we've got the full body characters um, that can just be used on tons and tons of different projects for your children or grandchildren. So those, those are lots of fun. Um, those were so successful that what we did is we took them and we also then cut them out of flannel. And so we've got a flannel line from Janet Nesbitt that we use. Um, and we cut the appliques out of flannel and cotton. Um, so it's a little bit more of a combination. Um, I'll also tell you that if you see buttons, um, like little eye buttons and that type of thing, those little notions are included in the packs as well. The next group that we did, um, those are Silly, Gilly, and Friends, and those are the little monsters. Real fun, uh, bright, bright colors, lots of fun. Moving on, um, these are the dragons, and these coordinate with Whirligig Magic. They're uh, using a lot of our brighter fabrics. A lot of our appliques, uh, we cut out of our basics um, or the basics that we can get um, from Henry Glass Fabrics because then we know that we can continue to cut them for a long time in those colorations because then we don't have to change them. So that's, that's what we do with, um, with the little dragons. Now the earlier dogs that I showed you were an eight inch size. So these are actually a five inch size. They would be a little bit smaller dog, um, smaller projects, smaller pieces of course, uh, but we've got different projects or project sheets that you can use um, with the smaller dogs. Again, we have those in the single patterns as well if you wanna cut your own and use a different coloration. And we have all of them as the five inch. Um, patterns. Then, mm -hmm. Yep, five yeah. inch patterns. Yes. Yeah. Now we've got um, on the top here, this, this is a group um, that we uh, did with our um, Away in a Manger. And so it's uh, a lot of the characters that would have been um, in the stable. We've got, of course, baby Jesus up on top with the star. Um, I don't think the flamingo was probably oh, in well, the manger, was it? Maybe. Could have been. Could have never been. know. You don't. <laughs> Might not have been documented. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, these were actually characters out of When I Am Big. And so those are some cute little characters, butterfly, mice. Moving on down, we've got, uh, we've got the little um, zoo animals that were from the Moon and Back collection. And um, this one's nice. Look at those zebra stripes. Oh, They're all on one really sheet. All on one sheet. All you got to do is pull that backing paper off and yep. snip them apart. And so you're not going to lose pieces. And that that is amazing. So that was the that was really the brainchild of Misha. <laughs> and then um, our last side here. Oh, these are some of our here's another side. Second to last side. Second to the last side. Um, these are uh, some of our newer ones. These are the trucks that we've done coordinating with Papa's old truck. As we move down, we've got the characters from Live Within Your Harvest.
And then sometimes we just do, uh, they don't necessarily coordinate with the fabric collection, but we have the little fishing bear and the ballerina bear that are really cute companions with our screen printed panels, why God made little girls and why God made little boys. So those are something that you can add on to that. And then um, our latest collection, which we're supposed to get in tomorrow. I'm so excited. Our production samples are coming in. These characters are from a group called Rescued and Loved. And these are characters that Caitlin and I thought that probably would be rescued and definitely <laughs> loved by those that rescue them. Included in that collection are dogs and cats. And so those aren't shown here. Um, but these had all different kinds with the chinchilla and the parrot, um, a mouse, a snake, you know, beauties in the eyes of the beholder. So everybody loves their different animals. And then we have kind of a section just with more holiday uh, type things. And so we've got bunnies for Easter. We've got snowmen and Santas. There's a reindeer and we've got appliques for Halloween. Keep in mind that all of these are available on our website. If you have any questions or can't find something, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed the tour of the laser room. We have really thoroughly enjoyed um, telling you a little bit more about it. We're so proud of what we've done here. We can't say enough about how happy we are to have Misha on board, running all of this, keeping it organized. I think her middle name is probably organized. And so we, we just can't say enough good things about Misha. She's a huge part of this business. And Caitlin and I are thrilled to have her here running this room for us. So we hope you've enjoyed this. And... We hope you'll stop back and see what else we have um, yet to come.